Hello. Today we're going to take a look at measures of central tendency. And more importantly, we're going to take a look at how it can be misused, for example, when, re when reporting average income in the United States, or how we can get possibly poor information when looking at life expectancies, which would be very important if we are looking at helping somebody with retirement uh, planning. So let's first of all review what we mean by measures of central tendency. Now, here I have a group of numbers here. There's seven values there. The mean would be what most people think of when they hear the word average. The mean would just be adding up those values and then dividing by how many we have. So for this set of data, the mean is 63. Now, the median is after we have arranged the numbers from smallest to largest, the median is just simply the number in the middle. So for the same set of values, the median is 55. The mode, if we have one, the mode is just simply the number that is occurring most often. So in this case, the mode is 50. Now, all of these are just a different way to measure what we call the measures of central tendency. However, any of them can actually be used to represent the average. And a lot of times when we get information, we really don't know which of these they are using. Okay? And we're going to take a look at some good examples here uh, in, on the following pages. Now, notice here we had an odd number of values. In that case, if there's an odd number, there will always be a value that is directly in the middle. So just a quick example here, sometimes we could have an even number of values. If that is the case and we're looking for the median, again, after we have arranged the values from smallest to largest, notice there's not an actual single value in the middle, so the median then is defined to be the mean of the two in the middle. So we would find the two that is center and take their mean. And of course that would be 60. So you can see that all of these values are not necessarily the same. However, any of them can be picked to represent the center or average. Now, when we have a nice symmetrical normal curve, which most things really don't fit a perfect, what we might think of as a bell curve. But if something does, for example, like IQ, um, maybe the height of American males or the height of American females in, a, in, a, in the United States, okay, that's going to fit a nice symmetrical bell curve. If that is the case, the mean, the median, and the mode will all be the same. So it really wouldn't matter which one we choose. However, most things don't fit a perfect symmetrical bell curve. Most things are skewed. So this is a right skewed distribution. Think of taking, let's say, this tail and stretching it that way to the right. Okay, when that is the case, and this is the case, for example, income in the United States. Notice we have most of the people here, and then we have some people over here a smaller number of people that are making a much higher income. So when that happens, of course the mode, remember, is the number that appears most often. So of course it's going to be here. The median is pulled up slightly, but the mean is very sensitive to what we might call outliers. So the mean is pulled that direction because of the outliers. Now, we can have a situation like this and this is a situation that uh, resembles more of life expectancies, and we'll, which we'll look at here in just a moment. But here, this is the tail, or it's skewed to the left. And again, the mean is the value that is very sensitive to outliers. So it's, it gets pulled in that direction more than the median. And of course, the mode here is just the value that occurs most often. So now let's take a look at some uh, data. This is just a chart of income distribution of what we call household income in 2014. Okay. Now you can see, you know, we have this big value here, and then of course, 
we have a tail going to the right or skewed to the right. Now, because it is skewed to the right income, okay, notice this is 2018 data. This is analysis from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. So in 2018, notice the difference between the median family income, which is 78,646, and the mean family income, which is 106,045. Because of outliers, because of the people that make a great deal of money, the mean, remember, is very sensitive to outliers. So the mean gets stretched or pulled in that direction. Now, both of these can be reported as the average income. In fact, when we are talking about income, when we hear income in the news, typically they are always quoting the median because the mean is very sensitive to those outliers. And when we have those outliers, okay, it's really difficult. This isn't the best representation. At least if they know, report the median, at least we know that half of the people are making less than that, half of the people are making more than that because that's the number in the middle. Okay. However, if they just use the word average income, we have to be very careful because you really don't know which one of these they use. Remember, when most people hear the word average, they typically, in their mind, think that you're talking about the mean. But if we're talking about income, typically they are always reporting the median. Two very different values. Also, if we were talking about average income in the United States, Again, most people just hear the word average. They just hear the word income. It can be very misleading because I don't know whether they use family income. And notice here, it's very different whether I choose median or mean. Listen for definitions. They could have used personal income, which is notice only 33,706. Uh, median or mean. Or they could use median household income. Okay, so when we hear the word average income, you really don't know whether they use the mean, the median, personal income, household income, family income. Okay, so you can see where we can really be pretty misleading and still quote or state a statement that is correct. Okay, actually, if I used average income in the United States, I could actually report any of these values and my statement would actually be correct. So you want to be very careful when you're getting information, know whether they're using the mean or the median and then how they're defining their terms. And of course this is very similar to uh, when we're looking at research articles or any data. Okay, we want to make sure are they use the mean or the median, why did they choose those, are there outliers, and how are they defining their terms. Okay, but in general, because there are such outliers with income, typically when you hear it quoted in the news, they're using the median value for that reason. Because at least then we know half the people are below that, half the people are above that. Okay. So that's with income. It's skewed to the right, okay, so the mean is always going to be higher than the median. Now, let's look at life expectancy. Notice here, then it's skewed to the left. Notice here we have a child mortality rate here, so we have this little bump here at year zero, okay. And then, of course, you know, we have a few people that die at a very young age and so forth. And then we have where most people die. Now, this is a graph, actually. This is uh, an actual data from the CDC. And this is for uh, U.S. females. Now, um, as we look at this, notice because it skewed this direction, the mean is going to be very sensitive to that these outliers over here, and the mean will always be much lower. What's odd about this is because of the outliers, like income, remember, because of the outliers, they use the median. But when life expectancy is quoted, they quote the mean, which, of course, is, is pulled in this direction. 
So they're quoting the mean, which means they're taking into account all of these down here. Well, if you're talking to somebody that is already an adult, the mean is not the best measure. Okay, it really doesn't give us an idea of what our most likely um, time of death might be. Okay, in fact, remember the most likely would actually be the mode. The mode here might be the most useful. But again, the mean is quoted, and that's always much lower. Okay. Here's one, here's the same chart for males. Okay. You can see here, okay, for for a male right now, okay, they would quote something around 78 years. But notice the most likely is up here. Okay. So in general here, this is from 2018, National Vital Statistics, again from the CDC. This is for men and women, so all people. Now, again, when they quote this, this is from the time of birth. So let's say a child was um, born in 2018. This would be the life expectancy that is quoted right now of 78.7 for men and women. Okay, that's the average of the two. Notice women is uh, would be 81.2. Min was 76.2. So this would be for a child born in 2018, what their life expectancy would be. But remember, when they say that average, they're quoting the mean in this case. The interesting thing here is that, what again, what might be more useful is the most likely time of death which is always much higher. So when you look at life expectancy, again, what is quoted is the mean, and that skewed this direction. If I'm talking to an adult that is near or in retirement and you're talking about life expectancy, the mode, which is, which is the most likely time of death, is about seven years higher than what's quoted for life expectancy, both for men and women, okay? So typically when we hear life expectancy, they're quoting the mean, which is very sensitive to these outliers down here, okay? And the median tends to be about three to four years higher than that, and the mode, which is the most likely time of death, is about seven years higher. And that might be a, most, a more useful number uh, if we were maybe wanting to do some retirement planning. So hopefully uh, this video was helpful. Again, mean, median, and mode happens to be some of the more simpler statistical measures that we use. However, as you can see here, uh, they quite often still are uh, misunderstood. So hopefully this video helped, and I'll see you next time.